Hello, welcome back. Right, in this latest um, series in my life, uh, we're going to be looking at Dale's car. I've taken the rear lights out already, don't worry about that. Um, it is quite a late soft dash. Um, not in bad condition actually. Fairly good order throughout. Dale's put a lot of um, additions on this. Um, maybe it's your taste, maybe not. It's Dale's car, Dale can do what the fuck he likes with his car. Um, nice leather interior on it. Uh, sunroof, it is an SE. <coughs> so it's one of the higher spec of the run out models um, it is 3.9 V8 which is nice rather than the turd of a 300 TDI it's nice to see a 3.9 in one of these oh yes um, yes so I was basically the jobs I need to do on this there's two jobs I'm going to start with because Dale's on a limited budget here well not on a limited budget but Dale's got a finite amount of cash you can put into this vehicle. So the first thing I need to sort out is the rear cross member. And in here, you can see over there, certainly, when I get this rear bumper off, you can see that the rear cross member is gone. <coughs> they always rot from the inside to the outside. I've got another galve cross member I'm gonna put on there. The other thing that I'm gonna do on this, and it's actually quite a common fault with Range Rovers with the ABS system. And that is, as you're slowing down and just before you stop, very 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 occasionally um, the ABS will kick in let's say if you drive one wheel over a uh, manhole cover at a junction the ABS can kick in and it can be quite disconcerting now Dale reports that this is happening in this car much 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 more frequently so I'm going to do some investigation into that um, soft dashes they bonded the screens in as well which is makes them difficult to work with around the front end. There's a lot of unique things on soft dashes. The whole bulkhead um, section is completely different. Clearly got dash differences. The seats are different, I believe. No, on this one, see the amount, they look the similar, I mean, they're different style, but they look similar to the, the standard classic seats. Doors are different, because they've got the much, much different, put your fucking teeth in, Richard. They've got different door cards and so forth. Um, cans on the front bumper um, obviously the whole electronic system again you can all the um, extra electronics on here we've got the fuse box up here rather than the fusible sock of doom down here serpentine belt engine distributors no longer mounted over here because it's gargantuan great big box uh, distributors sorry uh, ignition coil and um, amplifier are now down here um, this car's clearly running LPG um, but other than that, they're, they're, you know, they're not that much different. Electronically, they're a world different um, because rather than the wealth of relays and so forth, there is like a body control module up here. Um, a lot of the electrics kind of aren't in the same location as you would anticipate they might be on a hard dash classic. Um, yeah. Right, I'm going to start stripping this fella down to get this rear cross member out. Now, it's actually not that horrific a job. Um, obviously, tailgates need to... Well, top tailgate needs to lift. <coughs> when the uh, stone crunch is going over the road, um, it's because the trucks are coming in and out. The guys are using um, to get rid of all of the crunched up stone. But it makes this bloody noise all day long. And then the truck turns up and it goes quiet. And I think, oh, yeah. Right, so let's get the tailgate open. Good. Dale's made me some stickers as well. He's a good boy. Does a lot of shit for me. Dale also, um, I can't get the boot with him. Help if I use the right keys, Richard. Dale's keys. It's actually even got Dale written on it. Yeah, so Dale does the uh, the lights that I've been using. These tube LED lights. Um, provided me with cider for last week's beer and bollocks. There we are. It will open in a minute. Maybe it was unlocked. No. This is the problem with 
kind of like, you know, when you... How do you get the fucking tailgate? There'll be a, there'll be a trick. To, oh, there it is. There'll be a trick to that. <laughs> Probably be, they all be saying, what do you lock it for? Um, so in order to do cross member, really need all of this stuff needs to come out in the boot area. I need to get the rear bumper off. I need to get the lower tailgate off. Um, I need to get the rear wings off. And this is going to present me with a challenge because on this side, we've got an LPG tank, a uh, toroidal LPG tank. And when they put that in, they left the two screws. One is there and one is there, right behind the bloody tank. Which is a pain in the bollocks, I can tell you now. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to get down there. Uh, this wing is now largely free, as you can see here along the top edge here. Loads and loads and loads of silicon and shit all over this. Um, these quarter light rubbers, they are available again now. So um, Paul ABE um, is doing those. I'll put a link down below. Um, but uh, And they fit quite nicely. I, that, 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 that's not on the scope for this particular piece of work. I need to get these rear wings off. Now, on this side, because obviously we've got the locking fuel cap, um, there is a rubber that the pipe goes through in order to, um, to to access this thing, but it is a pain in the bollocks to get out. Basically, what you need to do is to get the pipe disconnected from down here, pull the pipe through the rubber, rather than attempting to take the wing off and leave the pipe intact. Um, I don't think we can see in here, but basically... Ooh, that's not nice. Um, basically, there's... A line of screws along this top rail here very similar to one on the two door and there's two right down the back down there so i think first and foremost and you can see i've already started stripping some of this out so i've taken things like the the rear seat catches have come off um the rear light units have come off so i just need to store all this stuff sensibly uh, probably in the front foot well down here <clears throat> and then i can uh, get on with, uh, with with pulling this thing apart very short while later right okay loom for the rear number plate lights goes up inside the boot lid up inside the bottom tailgate so what you basically have to do is to undo the four bolts slide the tailgate out slightly pull the loom out from inside the boot lid disconnect the connectors dead easy huh um right now i hear you all saying well that doesn't look too bad i mean honestly you could fix that yeah I could probably put a patch over that, couldn't I? Apart from the fact the thing is absolutely full of rust in there. Um, and then over there, oh, it's been patched already. Then what we'll do is we'll go underneath. This is the, uh, the tail zone. Ta-da! Yeah, that is proper fucked up. <laughs> can you even see that? I hope you can. Got a hole in your chassis as well, Dale. For fuck's sake. I might have to plate that over for you while I'm under here. Um, fuel tank's the biggest consideration here. Because ideally we want the fuel tank out. Uh, which means uh, that tow ball needs to come off. Um, and these things are absolutely not a bastard to get off. So we'll see what the fuel tank situation is. It might be a welded outside job. I'm not recommending that, folks. Right, there's quite a few patches on this, actually. I'll have to extract a little bit of the uh, the loom. It's got a bucket here. It's a smart wipes bucket, which I used up. Um, I'm going to start with that side, I think. Uh, we'll get this outer wing off. We'll put the, uh, the fuel filler neck back on. Um, so effectively, what we've got, this is quite, quite common here, a line of pop rivets along here, a line of screws along the top, there should be a couple of fixings behind this section here, which you reach from up inside the wheel arch, but this has been glued on. Um, as you can see, this wing now is fairly loose. Uh, rear light units, six, should be six screws, two, four, five, six. There was only two on each side. Um, so I might, I've got, I'm pretty sure I've got those screws. So really all I need to do now to get this wing off is to disconnect the fuel filler pipe underneath um, and uh, drill these pots, uh, pop rivets out down here. Then the rear wing can come off. <coughs> I think. Now, the other thing is, on the hinges, the, obviously these have got spring assist on them, which gives them a fair amount of bounce. On this side, the pin 
is not seized into the housing, which is I'm impressed with. Uh, this one, however, is. This is not unusual. Um, so, if you position the hinges like that, that's how the springs need to go. Okay? Notice? Notice how the spring fits in and around the pin? That's how they go. Um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, obviously the body mounts need to be disconnected. They'll probably just end up getting cut off. Um, we'll see. The rubbers look pretty tired. The washers look even more tired. We'll see. Um, these sections on the corner here I need to retain, if I possibly can. This piece in the middle here, um, unless it is spectacular, and this isn't looking too bad actually, this one. I could probably drill the, drill the spot welds out along this lip here. And this is the lip that puts the seal or, or on the protect, basically seals the lower tailgate against all the crap coming in from the exhaust. <clears throat> so I probably might be able to salvage that, we'll see. Right, it's not helping me get this bloody wing off though, is it? Who oh, no, no, it isn't. I'll tell you what, my dear. Oh, nice coffee. Wings off. Um, that's the fuel filler neck. Um, you can see it's got a lip around the top of it. <clears throat> um, and the lip goes into the screw on the rubber. So if you want to get it out, the wing, wing needs to be off. And then I put a flat blade screwdriver down to separate it off there. Get hold of the main body of the, the pipe, then pull it away and it comes out. Okay, doesn't damage the lip leaves it intact that's that off um, <laughs> amusingly while I thought the pin on this was really really good because it wasn't turning turns out that it's actually snapped off there's nothing really holding this hinge in you can see that that's broken off the end and it's rotted out in the middle like they always do so to get these off what I normally do should come out. It is going to come out. And then once it's out, it will fucking come out. Come on you bastard. Once it's out, you can see the pin has actually snapped off on one end and not the other. So I'll need drilling out. I'm going to find exactly the same problem at this end, um, except the pin is turning with the hinge. It's not uncommon folks. In fact, you can see there, the pin's still wedged in. <laughs> Don't worry about this, this gets replaced as part of the cross member. Um, I'm going to put the fuel line... Oh my god, really? Yes. Alright, I'll trick some of this rust and tell you while I'm up here. There was a world of sticky shite under here. Uh, but it's off. Now what I'll do is I'll pop the fuel filler back in. That chap there is for the sunroof drain. That is the breather pipe. And then we've got all these other breather pipes here, most of which just aren't connected. So on the back of the fuel filler, you've got this evaporation device. All the pipes are cut or broken. Just not connected. Don't understand it. Weird, huh? To get these things apart, by the way, the ones that have got the green collar around them, that green collar, what you basically do, pull the green collar back. I'm going to go down here amongst all the rot. Once the green collar, there's the filter there out of the, this is the filter from the air suspension. Yeah, they do that. Uh, Where's it gone? Once the green colours come out, you can then see the white sleeve. And very much like the, um, the air suspension pipes, you push this in and pull the pipe out. I don't know where the other pipes have gone. They've all disappeared somewhere. There's one. What's that one for? I think that's the remains of an air suspension pipe there. I can't find the other breather pipes. There are none. So, yeah. <laughs> There's a patch there, look. Right, I'm going to start drilling out spot welds in a minute. 
Okay, taking the LPG tank out primarily, because when I looked underneath it, it's not great, is it? It could probably be a drain hole underneath there somewhere. Um, it's all quite solid though. I've not been at it with Mr. Tuppy. I'm not intending to either. Um, the other reason I took the tank out is because I was a bit worried about how much was in that tank. It's nearly empty. Um, and when I take the cross member out, is it not going to push down on the floor? Because it's not actually bolted onto the chassis. It's just bolted through the floor. It's got this big bolt up here, which goes into spare wheel retainer and then it's got a nut on the back and there's a nut on the front there so but it's fine there's nothing wrong with the mounting for it but i was just worried that when i come to take the cross member out it's going to put too much load on the corner so you can isolate the gas quite easily when you do this uh, now these chaps here are the two screws that i couldn't access which i can now so we can get this wing off So yeah. Oh yeah! You can see what's going on behind it at the same time as I do. This is going to be a lot better than try to work around it. Let's just do it properly. Right, put the screws in the box and lifting the wing and off the back well, it's better than the other side. It is better than the other side. Right, I need to put these carefully out of the way. I'm going to put those in the container in a second so they're stored out of the way. Yeah, this side is a lot better than the other side. It has rotted out there, though. It's quite a common rot point on these later Range Rovers for some reason. I don't know why. You don't see it on early cars. You see it on all the later cars, though. But... Uh, Again, not my remit, but what I will do before this all goes back together again, I will um, go through the whole thing and spray some dinner troll or something in here. I'm collecting quite a lot of mud on the other side of this thing. Right, now let's see what's going on in here. largely surface rock. So I'm not going to go fucking ballistic with it. And I will paint it before it goes back together again. That's quite a lot of shit there. There's a hole. Never mind. It's going so beautifully. Right, I think next I'm going to see if I can salvage this lip. If I can, then fabulous. If I can't, then I shan't worry. Well, it's just a case, really, of going along here, finding the spot welds, drilling the spot welds. Oh, there's my phone. Drilling the spot welds and uh, see if we can get it off in one piece. Now, when I was banging this hinge, to get this hinge pin out, you can see it's actually buckled the cross member. Um, we know the cross member's heavily compromised in that area anyway. Uh, but certainly not getting any better. And again, all bits like this, just paint them before it goes back together again. Yeah, this side is completely different. It's an original cross member as well. So what's this, 95 car? It's lasted all this time with a couple of patches on the cross member, a little bit like that LSE. Um, so it lasted quite a long time with an original cross member. Yeah, this is all fuck. this is horrible. I might have to put a patch in there, chap. Just nothing connecting there. And there, there you see, someone's put a new arch over the existing rust. There's the original arch there. Put a new arch in. But like I say, bother about that at the moment. New, 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 new. And as is nearly always the case, when you get Mr. Zip wheel on these things, they start looking a whole lot less pretty. Um, so, <clears throat> it's a bit of a fucking no-brainer, isn't it? I think this came from, this might be YRM. I'll put a, a, a um, there we are, there's a part number, 030A, I think it is YRM. Um, but I'll put the, uh, the link down below. If it's not YRM, the link will be here right now saying, Richard, you buffoon. The wrong one. 
Now, when I was hoovering this out, um, yeah, that appeared. I didn't even tap it. Um, <clears throat> perhaps I drill that round, it could be a drain hole. Uh, it's actually largely held together with underseal around that hole, so I didn't prod any further. Um, now, in order to get this, um, this boot floor released, there are a couple of tags just on the corners. They're always there. This is factory stuff, this. As there is a couple of tags there which hold the boot side section onto the top of the cross member. This piece here is the top of the cross member. Okay. Then we've got spot welds all the way along the boot floor. Tag weld, tag weld. And then there'll be some more welds as we go down here onto the base of the, the goal post. So we'll start looking at those in a minute. But what I'm going to do first of all is see if I can free up the boot floor. This is a lot of drilling now. The other thing that happened is that while I was kind of tapping away, and I'm surprised this didn't actually happen while it was on the road, the entire reverse side of the cross member has fallen out. So yeah, he's, he's, um, <laughs> he's tired this one. Now the other thing is, look, I've had a pot rivet. Do we reckon that's a factory pot rivet? Because it was underneath the body under seal. Oh man! Actually, I won't chuck it down there because I'll drive over the fucking thing. I'll put it over here in the scrap waste. There's going to be a whole load more scrap waste in a minute when this thing comes off, I tell you. Okay, so we can see the floor is now loose. Loosened the side sections, cut through a couple of tags. Bearing in mind this is all factory, so you, if yours is still factory, you're going to find the same thing. A couple of tags through there, and there's a bloody great spot weld just in here. And then I'm able to bang this piece upwards. Now, there's only one more chunk, really, that's holding this side on. So drilled spot welds there, and drilled spot welds there. However, this is really fucking annoying. This, is, this has spot welds along this edge here. So where this piece of steel comes down and goes on top of the cross member, that's got spot welds. A couple of spot welds on the inside edge, but it's only that wide. You can't get to it from the inside unless you're cutting the floor away. So I'm going to have to do it from the end and see if I can get a chisel in and just bang through them or get the reciprocating saw in there and cut through them. Um, as you can see, I cut the mounting off. So cut through the mounting which went on like that. Severely compromised. Uh, the rubbers as well are severely compromised, shagged out. Replace those, the bolt, unfortunately the bolt goes in from the top. I don't know how they get the bolt in on these things. Um, I think they put the bolt through the rubber and then put the rubber through the mounting and then fix it onto the chassis. It's a little bit like the bolt that go in at the trailing edge of the sill. Much the same sort of thing. There's no obvious way. Now, the only other thing I do, underneath here, there is a little flap along there. And rather than drilling, because invariably that bit is rotted out anyway, rather than drilling out a load of welds, I just cut it along that edge. And then this piece, I'll put a plate over the top of it that goes onto the bottom of the new, uh, onto the bottom of the new <sighs> cross member. This will be out in about uh, 15, 20 minutes, I reckon. I've just got to repeat this process on that side um, and we'll be out. Oh, yes. No special tools really. I mean, the only, I guess, special tool would be my nice reciprocating saw. Um, as you can see, the blade's got a little bit on the warm side. And there's quite a few teeth missing off that. I might treat it to a new one. Oh dear. And it's out. So yes, it does come out with those two bolts on there. Um, right, where are we? That's the driver's side. Can you see, there wasn't a lot left of it. Once they start rotting out, they're gone. However, passenger side of it wasn't too bad kind of a little bit up there but yeah I mean the whole thing's gone really that's the passenger side outrigger M piece and that's the driver's side outrigger M piece both goalposts are in really good order uh, both are recoverable so I just need really to put the new um, section in get it kind of so it fits um, one thing I will need to recover, by the way, you need to get this thing out here. There's a plastic tube that goes through, all right, and that's what the um, the electrics goes through that. There it is. It came out. <laughs> I just used, I used a 3 eighths bar 
and just was able to gently percuss it out. Right, I think it's getting too humid now. <clears throat> I've had enough. I'm going to um, get back onto this first thing in the morning. I left my, um, my video camera at home, so we're just going to have to do this uh, via my phone, I'm afraid, which is why the quality may be better or worse, I don't know. So basically, when you're getting these um, cross members back in, I tend to insert this end over the top of the exhaust first and foremost, and then it goes in kind of face down, if you get my drift. And then really you need to kind of move it across as you're lifting the floor up so it's not getting trapped. And then the last thing that always happens is that bit down there gets hooked up on the edge here. So, let's get another pry bar. That will do. It's just a case really of lifting that up and then giving it a bang across. Might just actually... I need two hands, unfortunately, to do it. But uh, by lifting that, you can see there's a fair amount of movement there. I can lift that up, give it a uh, give it a tap, and it will actually go, yeah, move move across and over that lip there. <laughs> Just like that. Oh yes. Right then, a couple more taps. Right, that's more or less in place now. Now what I need to do is to rotate the whole thing like upright, um, which actually is not as horrible as it sounds because there is a fair amount of um, movement in here, the floor and so forth. Um, but I do need two hands again to do it. And having left my camera at home, I can't show you how to do that. Um, but basically you just need to get that edge down here. Um, but it's all fairly straightforward getting these things in. Just need to come across a little bit further. Yes, because we're not quite far enough across there. Now yeah, that'll probably do it a bit better because now we've got the hinges level with the center line of the chassis rails. Um, sometimes you can actually just lift it with your hand. There we are, I've done it exactly like that. Lift it with your hand. Okay, now the next thing we do need to do is it's basically put it on top of the mountings here and here and when it's on top of the mountings then you start clamping things in so clamp it at the ends and then you need to jack the whole thing up in order to get the rubbers in now you can't put the rubbers in as they were from the factory um because the rubber comes in a number of different sections but i tend to put the rubbers in upside down uh, and i'll show you that in a second let me get this thing lined up first of all Right, so that was ever such a swift jemmy there, just underneath. We've got the cross member now roughly in position. Obviously it's too low, because I need to get a rubber underneath here. And it needs to go up quite a lot as well. So, there's something stopping there. Oh, it's just bits of steel on the inside there. I'm going to tidy that up with the, with the crowbar. Um, I think this side will probably go up a lot easier. Yep, so it's actually lifting. The body just a little bit so it's quite a good job I took the um, the LPG tank out right so the way these were originally put that metal sleeve there is part of this washer and normally that would have gone in from underneath however that's gonna be bloody impossible to put in so I put them up that way um, and then the other rubber and the washer I put in so I can lift it and slide that in you get my drift and then the bolt goes in from the bottom for now. <laughs> that was out loud, Richard. That was out loud. And to lift this thing, what I tend to do is to put the jemmy under there and you can get a fair amount of lift, really, just off the chassis rail. Um, it will manipulate around and get itself into the right sort of places. So I'm gonna stop videoing now and I'm gonna actually just get this thing lined up and in place and then I can start cleaning back the surface ready for welding. Um, this particular cross member, it's a galvanised unit. It came from GDI Products, link below. And there it is with the mounts in. Um, like I say, it's, it's, it's not that difficult. Okay, you might have to use a jemmy. And if I'm using a jemmy, I use it against the top of the chassis and underside of that section there, so I'm not like to damage anything. Uh, and basically, I lift it up enough to put the washers underneath. 
um, and then grease the bolts, bang the bolts upwards, put the top section of the washer down, then put the nut on the top. Um, and when they're done up nice and tight, everything kind of lines up. So here, there's a gap there, purely because I need to pull that in tight again. Um, I've banged these down, they fit beautifully. That's gonna fit beautifully, 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 beautifully. Now, all I'm gonna do here um, is I will use probably my spot weld drill just to take the galve surface off there and then plug weld each of these holes. Uh, when you're welding galve, uh, be wary, very wary of the little will-o'-the-wisps, pretty will-o'-the-wisps that rise off it. Um, that smoke, um, is, it will make you throw up. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's poisonous, but it's not deadly. Well, I don't believe it's deadly. Um, yes, and along here, what I'll have to do is I'll just have to put the um, belt sander just to take a little bit of galve off where that is. And then some zinc paint back over the top. But that is all looking, yeah pleased enough with that it's back in obviously you need to feed the uh, wires through before the gal before the cross member goes in otherwise you'll curse yourself have to take it out or take the fuel tank out in order to feed these wires through because you can't get them through with the cross member in place or with the fuel tank in place right the rest of this is fairly straightforward um, so I shall probably not bother videoing too much more of this assembly process I'm welding it together this afternoon I'll need to drill these hinges out which is going to be the next job I'm going to do because they is fucked. Proper fucked.